Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> unexpected Beagle session. No music, just an interview with Mr. James Hennigat. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, James, um, don't have... I had to figure out some questions, like, two hours ago. No, we're improv in it. Im yeah. we're in no, but I, actually, I got some questions. Normally, I ask for uh, to introduce yourself, but uh, our listener... Oh, well, there's motorcycles riding around, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we think there's a biker rally going on that we don't know about, but... Uh, <laughs> I would ask you to introduce yourself, but I'm pretty sure everyone knows you. Busa says no, but... Uh, <laughs> I think you sound so famous. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Glue. Everyone knows me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so we're just going to go to the first question. Okay. The new album. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yep, that's a good question. I'm working on a few different new albums. A few, I've One of which will be the new album <laughs> at some point and when can we i you know what i can't even give a date right nope. now when i when i've given dates in the past i've been wrong obviously because mm -hmm. it hasn't happened yet um so i'm, <laughs> I'm not going to give a date until i have it like actually finished All right and now that i'm not touring so much um i'm hoping to uh have something done by the end of this year because i'm not touring as much but i've i've learned in the past uh, when I set dates, it just never happens it never that happens. way. So it, I've, it's it's like this joke. I feel like the universe just plays a joke. On me <laughs> and I'm like, I'm gonna put my album out on April nineteenth. No, it never happens that way. So I just I'm I'm not doing release dates anymore until I have it like in my hand done. Can we expect a vinyl? Uh, hopefully, hopefully, yep. yeah. You gonna release it on a label or uh, you're gonna do it independent? All of the above. All of the above. D all of the above. Because I'm looking at doing. Uh, some things with uh, with Muddy Roots recordings yep. with Jason. I'd like to do something with Farmageddon at some mm -hmm. point if that happens too. Um, Darren, got, if you're listening and yeah. watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a, a couple other labels too that I'm looking at. And I, I don't want to mention because we haven't like come to an agreement on anything of yet. Of course. So, because that can be bad too. You, when, you, when, when in doubt, don't. Don't, don't, say, jinx, don't jinx don't it. Don't start throwing the names around. Yeah, yet. don't jinx it. Putting something out on Sony. <laughs> Geffen Records, yeah. You're a metalhead. Yes. Uh, you're a hardcore kid. Yeah. You're a punk rock guy, whatever. Uh, yeah, I got my punk rock, too. You played rockabilly. Yeah. Uh, how did you end up doing this? I'm very confused, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just love music. Yeah. I like uh, all kinds of music. Um, I've found something in, in most genres of music that I've been exposed to that I enjoy and mm -hmm. that speaks to me. Like, uh, to me, the heart and soul, if it's there, I, I really vibe on that. And I, I love music enough to where I really just uh, feel really inspired and compelled to express myself in those different ways. Like, I really enjoy playing all those different kinds of music. Um, I think that's why I've ended up doing so many different kinds of music is because I couldn't be... I know people that just play punk rock or just play bluegrass or just play metal. And I like too many different kinds of things to do that. Like, and I really, really dig them. Like, I, yeah. I love old country music. I love old rockabilly. I love punk. I love old metal. I love those things. And I mean, I like pop and electronic stuff too, and industrial music. I'm now that I'm not going to be touring. I, you know, I'm going to be doing some stuff that's probably going to trip people out. They're going to be like, "What? Yeah, you know, like really hardcore, weird techno records. Like, <laughs> serious? I'm not even kidding. Like, there's so much stuff that I want to do. You know, and I think it's, it's just. Just loving music and loving not specific genres so much as just really, I love music, you know, and I and I and I love writing it and performing it and I love nerding out and recording and mixing it too, you know. So I'm really in love with the entire process with it, you know. You got this. A lot of your songs have this dark undertone. You know Scott Kelly from the Roses. Yeah. You've heard his records. Um, I haven't heard his solo stuff. Well, but it's I've like. Heard it's like them. acoustic metal, actually, and okay. I was wondering because your your album uh, "Who Will Raise the Flag," yeah, I did a review for it and was I mentioned it a couple times like it sounded like acoustic metal, yeah, you but can not, hear the metal in there, but not like what he does. And I was wondering like, are you ever gonna go like like really dark acoustic and like almost depressing or um is it not not that not I'm, I'm not saying that like you're depressed but like like the really dark sound or do you just like to keep like that little sparkle 
You know what I'm done? No, that's a good question, man. I uh, I think I have written stuff that's really dark, and I think it just, just depends on what I'm going through and what I'm feeling in life. Mm -hmm. That really that dictates what the, where the music's going to go. You know, I think life experience and what's happening and how you're feeling, what you're thinking about, that naturally is going to be what um, kind of steers you in whatever direction. That, that's how the music, you know, unfolds. Um, if I found myself in, you know, dealing with darker stuff, I've just, I've been happier in recent years, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a happier person than I used to be, like, than when I even wrote 99 Lives, like, 99 Lives is a dark album, and there was a lot of darkness and some depression going into that, and, and a lot of songs, insp you know, inspired by addiction and my, my drinking and stuff in mm -hmm. the past, those things just aren't the looming dark you know difficult things to deal with that they used to be so they're yeah. kind of things in the past in a way but um but i could see myself doing something like that i mean i love my music tends to be more minor key mm -hmm. kind of darker sounding to yeah, begin with that way and uh and i love the like you said some of the stuff on the, the who will raise the flag stuff some of that newer stuff is heavier and yeah. you can hear it the metal influence coming into it even if it's acoustic yeah. acoustic it's like you can you hear like the chords it's yeah like, totally yeah. And it's got distortion in there, you know. I mean, you can hear it. It's it is almost like metal acoustic, yeah. Kind of, and I'm, I'm excited with that. I've been writing a lot of stuff that's in that vein. Uh, just naturally, just feels right to do it. I'm enjoying it, and I also feel that that stuff will really bridge the gap between my more folky acoustic stuff mm -hmm. and doing the more hardcore metal stuff that I want to do too. You know, and I'm excited to do that because the heavier acoustic stuff that I'm doing, I feel like it's really blending it's it's a uh, blending my influences more together in a way yeah, yeah more yeah. than i have in the past so it's exciting to me because it's it's like it's like folk and acoustic and kind of old country in parts but then it's metal acid rock kind of psychedelic in ways too and i love that you know i want to confuse people not not intentionally yeah, yeah but if i can do something i love and really dig it and people are like fuck i don't know what the hell to call this that's cool you know i think <clears throat> question well it's actually Busa's question I would call the fan question but we can call the friend question yeah as beautiful as you are is that based on true events all right <laughs> Can I go for you? the dogs ran away they said yes it's about us <laughs> uh. we, we, we talked about the fact that can I ask you anything yeah yeah totally. and I thought I written down a question that was more heavier than this, but uh, no, that's fine. That's uh, it's not. I don't think it's about a, a particular person. I have written songs that are inspired by particular people, and and including you know former girlfriends. That song is just more a general theme. It's what inspired it for me is it's not about breaking up so much as about realizing that that's the next step. Mm -hmm. Like that's the thing that you're gonna have to do. That like you you realize that this relationship and it could even be a friendship too i mean it, it is yeah. more like a, a relationship specific you know the the whore thing and stuff <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's just more I, i think i was trying to be more funny with that than anything else but yeah um just that you realize that that relationship is it's just become too toxic and too difficult to make work it's not working that the we like to say like the pros outweigh the cons like mm -hmm. if something there's more positives than negatives it's like it gets to the point where it's not that way like there's more negatives and there's more pain and grief and arguing going on than good times like it's just not worth it like you know in the interest of both people we probably shouldn't be doing this kind of thing it's it's about reaching that point and uh that's yeah it's not not specifically one person but i've reached that point in what a in in a few different relationships yeah. you know and it's not a specific girl like Because for one thing, I've I've never called a girl that I dated a whore. Yeah. <laughs> Neither nor would I. I don't think they've ever been. I hope not. <laughs> but I just you know, that's that's just more kind of. I was just kind of having fun with that. Right. You know. But yeah. Uh, Europe, and actually Belgium, in particular, you get a special bond with us. With with, with not, not not us, but. But like, yeah, with you guys, yeah. With, you love playing here, don't you? I do. I do. Is it, is it so much different than playing in the States or? Uh... Um, yes and no. I, I enjoy playing in Europe in general. I just really like the, the kind of flow of things. Um, I, I feel like things 
are kind of uh, they kind of they just have more of a logical flow to them. I feel like people are more relaxed over here um, compared to at home, and uh, also just it. Uh, Beagle session. <laughs> yeah, totally. Keep it real. Uh, I think that uh, also just uh, geographically too. It, it doesn't get. I mean, it's hot right now, but. It doesn't get really hot over here. It's overcast. It rains a lot. It's green. It reminds me of home a lot. Yeah. So when I'm here, when I'm walking around, and you're from Seattle originally, yeah, right? like like uh, well, I was born in Everett, which is about 40 minutes north of Seattle, and I grew up and live in Port Orchard, which is like an hour west of Seattle, but it's right next to right next to Seattle. So that area, yeah. So I any time I'm in a place that where it rains or it's not really hot and it's kind of overcast. You see a lot of clouds, a lot of cloudy days and a lot of trees around. That really reminds me of home. And uh, I get that in, in Belgium and the Netherlands too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, it, it's cool. Like the, just the, the, the weather and the atmosphere and everyone's really nice. I just, yeah. I mean, I've, I think most of the shows I've played in Europe, I, the majority of them have been in Belgium. You know, that's true. And, and you know, it's like we're, we we see each other a lot. We hang out yeah. each other a lot. Yeah, we see each other a lot. Actually. We're back is constantly. <laughs> you know, like and, and there's a reason for that. It's definitely, you know, and Muddy Roots being at, at Wardama too. Like yeah. the, you know, it's Belgium is really kind of the 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 center point for me for uh, for like the Muddy Roots yeah. Farmageddon, like this underground. It's like roots a fallout base. Like spot we can Europe, go. Yeah, you know? indeed. You write a lot of emotional songs, like really emotional songs. Yeah. And I've seen you get like really emotional on stage. Yeah. And I can imagine it's, it has to be hard to play some of those songs for the, for an audience. Uh, I'm trying to think how to end this question, but like, I've seen you crying on stage. Oh yeah, yeah. You'll probably see me cry again too. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not cry. I'm crying now. <laughs> this interview is done. <laughs> Stop asking me. No, I haven't seen a lot of artists like you. Actually, I've, I've seen a lot of people play, but not like you, like putting your heart into there, into this. And uh, Philip, Philip's sitting here, and Philip wrote the amazing song. When I'm cruel. When I'm cruel. And that was like a song that really got to me. Yeah. But I can see you <coughs> standing on stage like starting a song and like <laughs> yeah how hard is that like you know i think when it when i first started doing that it was hard and i was kind of guarded about it mm -hmm. i was kind of defensive about it maybe a little scared to do that you know but um i think as the years have gone on I, when i first started digging that deep into songs mm -hmm. i thought i was really being personal and really opening up my life and my heart and my mind to where it was very exposing my feelings and life experience that way. It was about 20 years ago in a band, uh, Misery Seed, that I was in. That was the first band that I really started writing my life story in the songs. And I think that's when I first started really getting that kind of an emotional connection to it because it was really personal. I was really, you know, exposing myself in a way that I hadn't before. And that, that can be kind of scary to do. And it's also... Um, you take it more personally if people aren't paying attention or don't like what you do yeah. because you're not just up there rocking out. Hey, I can imagine you, you're know? playing in like in a bar and you're, you're pouring your heart out and yeah. there's like a TV screen there and TV screen there. and It can be hard not to take that personally if yeah. people aren't feeling it because you're being so personal. But it's, I've worked like, anymore it's the only way I really know, like know how to do it. That's the only way I want to do it. I want the music that I'm doing to, ha to be that personal, that real. You know, I, I want it to be the essence of me and how I feel and how I think to where there's no, you know, that it's, it's super raw and, and genuine. Mm -hmm. So, because I think that, you know, that we all have that, yeah. we all carry that around and, uh, and it's scary for all of us to share that or open that up sometimes. And, and I think that it helps us to do that. That's the, when you said like, it's scary for all of us, like listening to you, to your music for some people, it, can be scary because it brings out emotions. I remember Muddy Roots, I think 2013, I was crying for my dog that died like so many years ago. Yeah. And I was like, actually I was like, thank you, James. I was just looking and I, 
my wife is filming this and I, she can say that's true but my my tears were like rolling down my eyes like ah oh, i needed this yeah and it feels good to do that and yeah I, it's important you gotta let yeah, it out yeah and that, that's i think we suffer more because we don't let it out or we try to hold it in and we try to be tough and strong and i think especially like as men too as males we're not expecting you know boys don't cry yeah supposed and they, to be tough and all that crap to quote Lou shields there's no crying in the skate park yeah <laughs> yeah it's but it's yeah it's 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 unhealthy to hold that in you know you you got to let things go and let it out that's part of the process with life is the harder you hold on to things the more it hurts when you lose them or when they change you have to be able to flow with it like a river you know and that's and tears are it, I mean that's part of the river you got to let it out let it flow true you know <clears throat> you're playing solo now how does it feel because you've been playing in so many bands so many artists and now you don't have a band anymore. Yeah, not uh, not any not anything full time. Yeah, and like yeah, which it's cool actually. It's it's refreshing to me. It's kind of a relief. I I miss playing with Jared and Jake and Liz. Um, I think the Broken Band was the best band I've ever been in. I've been in I've been in some really good bands. I've been incredibly fortunate to play with really talented people, and some really really good bands. But the Broken Band, I think piece by piece, person by person, was, you know, the most talented band I've ever been in. It may be the most talented band I ever play in, too. <coughs> and we we played a lot of shows together. We played, not all four of us, but with when the Broken Band started in early 2010, like Jake and I, and between Jake and I, and, and Joe Perez, and Fish Guts, and Jared and Liz, um, the Broken Band played over a thousand shows together. A lot wow. of shows. That, that's like, a lot of shows. <laughs> Since 2010, years. yeah. That's all. Wow. All the shows, <laughs> and that's a. Uh, it's kind of like you know, and it's like a relationship being in a band. You get you have a very special bond that's special between you that it's very true. few other people un really understand. You mm -hmm. know, and um, and you see each other at your best and your worst, and you go through your highs and lows together. It, it's it's like you know, a romantic relationship in a lot of ways, almost every way aside from. You know the the obvious the <laughs> obvious sex thing <laughs> unless you're Jared and Liz because they, they, <laughs> they are romantically involved but uh they're animals <laughs> they're crazy they're crazy it's uh you know that that needed to end for the time it was good for us not to do this now um I miss them but yeah it's been such a relief like the last um three tours I've done uh, uh, it was Europe last fall with the Freeborn Brothers. That was my first tour after the Broken Band, you mm -hmm. know, called it quits. And then I did a tour with, with uh, Austin and Heather, Hangdog Hearts, yep. last spring. Which, aside from getting sick, that both those, both those tours were phenomenal. And they were two of the funnest tours I've ever done because I actually just got to relax and just do my thing. Yeah, indeed. I wasn't doing my thing and doing the Broken Band every night because... It got to a point where that was just running me into the ground trying to do both those things all the time because we were averaging, I think, 250 shows a year. And most of those shows, I would do my set and the Broken Band set. So it's, it's like, like 500. Yes, yeah, that's insane. Yeah, indeed. So you did 2,000 sets, actually. Yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, I, if I count, yeah. It's, yeah. Which is crazy. It's actually, it's terrifying when you think about it. <laughs> it's like, and you wonder, I, I should be way crazier than I am. But it's, uh, it's, it's an incredible relief. I'm enjoying touring more now than ever. I'm, yeah. I'm Philip and I, it's like, in, in many ways, this has been the funnest tour I've done. I'm looking right at him. Well, in my, in, my, in my opinion, uh, it was the first time today that I saw you guys play together. Mm -hmm. You guys are, should really make an album together. And I mean it. We like, were talking about it on the way here. Really? Think, yeah, we seriously, yeah. We were uh, like, dude. You should. Yeah. Thank it's, you. You guys together sound awesome. Thank you. Two totally different voices. And it, it just connects. It's, it's awesome. Uh, and... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to hope this happens. And, no, uh, me too. We were talking... We Seriously, we were talking about it on the way here too. Like it's... Yeah. But last night at Bacchus when we were jamming... I was like, man, I want to re-record some of these songs. I want you to play banjo on them. We we're like, yeah, let's do that. And on the way here, even we were talking about doing, doing that. Maybe even doing something with the recording from today because it turned out we were listening to it on the way here and we're like, holy crap, it sounds really good. 
we were both geeking out on it. We almost didn't want to get out of the van. We just got there, like, <laughs> hey, oh, it man, took you guys some time to get out of that. <laughs> it sounded awesome, man. Um, well, actually, I'm out of questions, but uh, normally I ask, like, for a funny story or a crazy story. If you got one. Uh... <laughs> I got a lot. <laughs> but I want to. I got to think. Is it something that I want to tell in an interview? Yeah. Have <laughs> the world to know. Uh, yeah. Let me think. No, the first one that popped into my head. I don't think. I don't, I don't um, Doesn't have to be a sex story. Just a, a funny yeah. This is kind of right in that line of being. I would never tell like a full on sex story. In the, this like, is just close. just a funny thing that happened. Whatever. It's like. Uh, let me think here. Let me think of one. I'll think of something good. In one, two, oh shit, three, because I four. haven't, I still haven't thought of one other than the other one, the one that I don't want to tell, because yeah, it's it's, it's a bit much, one. it's a bit much, it's a bit too much, and the other one I'm thinking of is even worse. Hey, now it's a beagle session. <laughs> it's official. What? What? What's going on? Battery? Mm. Oh, should we pause? And then say fuck you to the camera, and then we're out. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I can send you the story. I'll send you the story, or we'll do the story. <laughs> All right. Uh, guys, you have got a story coming. I so we're, uh, we're tuning out. Bye. Love you, man. Thank you. Mwah. Oh, shit. Uh -oh. <laughs> I went to Beagle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there was a no Beagle session. It was a no Beagle session. <laughs> like, what did I do? All right, we're out. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> that was awesome. That was fun, man. Thank you. Great fucking Thank you. questions. Now we can that those. was really good. <laughs> Are you okay? Blame, <laughs> blame, blame it on James. Poor baby. Happy blame it on James. It's like I was just Don't trying to love you. Your face. <laughs> no, she eats poo, Jay. Uh, <laughs> they all do. As long as you don't smell it, yeah, I still think it. My cat licks her butt, and I kiss my cat, too. I was still filming. Yeah. <laughs> There's your story. There's your story. There's the story. There's the funny story. <laughs> Bam. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> That's a good ending. Yeah. <laughs>